Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Can you grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee? Maybe this time of year you'd like something a little colder. Uh, but just stay with us for the next few minutes. And I know that I always say that we love hearing from you, but it is so true. And today some of the best things came in on email. I just, I, it just kind of makes my heart want to explode, especially one lady who just discovered the program and uh, she saw just a few days ago a program with Carol Kent and her if, if you know the story of Carol Kent she's got a son in prison for life and he is a wonderful Christian inside that prison helping other inmates and um, she and her husband are on the outside and they're all working you know with prisoners and their families and this lady had just discovered the program she said I have a son in jail and I'm pretty sure he's going to prison she says I hope he finds a Christian in there you know like Carol's son isn't it wonderful to be workers together with Christ that's what that's what we're doing even you know on television we're separated we'll never maybe meet until we get to heaven but how we can all be workers together and and we can be here and tell you about all these wonderful ministries and so thanks for taking the time Thanks for taking the time to uh, let us know that we are a blessing and why. That helps. And I did forward that letter to Carol Kent. She's going to be encouraged, too. That's what we're supposed to do, just encourage each other. Okay, you'll be glad you tuned in today. I have a return guest, Karen Budzinski. And the last time she was here, she talked about marriage. I remember one thing she said for sure. You so want to be loved, but are you lovable? Oh, that was good, wasn't it? And that's what we talked about, but today we're going to talk about how to build children with integrity. And this is quite a book along with a workbook that she has. We will have her website up uh, if you are, are interested in this. She homeschooled five children. They're all married now. She, she just ought to write a book about her life, probably. If you didn't meet her last time, you're going to love her. I promise you that. And I'm going to join Stephanie. I hope I say this word right. We're going to fix Szechuan fried chicken. And it's got some real kind of oriental type flavors in it. I think you'll like it. Before I join her, though, I have a few more copies of the Daniel Plan. You have been ordering these, and uh, we're about to run out. But it's a wonderful, wonderful plan for a healthy life, you know, physically, spiritually, emotionally. And uh, it's by Rick Warren and a couple of doctors. And it's your, yours for a gift to the ministry of $23. That includes your shipping and handling. We'll get it right out to you. And it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. You know, sometimes we just don't have the knowledge on how to uh, be healthy and how to really, you know, line up with God and his word. He says, without faith, it's impossible to please them. So we can start right there. And then a lot of people could learn more about emotions. So this is, this is your book. I hope you'll get it. There's an 800 number there for your credit cards, or you can look at the address on the screen and write to us. And I'm here with Stephanie, who just fresh out of the dentist chair. I'm still slightly numb. She got a root canal, mm -hmm. but she's so committed. You I am didn't a trooper, go, folks, let me tell you. No. <laughs> didn't go home and go to bed. No, nope. here. I'm here. I popped some ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. I'm at work. Will that make you a little... No. Yeah. No. Well, we've already no. fried the Szechuan. Okay, so we're going to go over, though, what, we're, what you're supposed to yes. do before you fry it, and then we're going to make a nice little sauce to go over mm -hmm. it, okay? So I have soy sauce. I have ginger, fresh ginger. Fresh ginger. Mm, and I have some sugar. Okay, and we're going to mix that together, and then you're going to just put it, uh, baste the chicken with it. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to simply take the basted chicken and put it in flour, mm -hmm. okay? And then you're going to just fry it gently. Don't, it's already... So we've got some fried up yep, that looks so, just beautiful. So I'm basting the chicken, mm -hmm. I'm putting flour on it, I'm putting it in some cooking mm -hmm. oil, okay? Then, now let me tell you, well, they're going to tell you a little secret. It called for chili um, oil, mm -hmm. okay? It was like ten dollars. Ten dollars for a, a bottle small like thing. that. And she's like, "Oh no, we're not." And it needed a teaspoon. And it, one teaspoon. So no I, way. I googled it, of course, <laughs> and it, it said uh, you could do cooking oil with red crushed pepper. 
Mm -hmm. So we just did that to make up for the chili oil, which we're not even going to put in here a, a much because you don't like spicy. No. Okay. Not the so color. we fried up the chicken, Those which is done beautifully. Thank you, Susan. Fried yes. Those up for us. Thank you, Susan. These are beautiful. And then I'm going to take um, a quarter of a real, cup of preserves. I got real impressed with the I apricot preserves. It has to taste oh good. Oh my gosh, it's going to be delicious. A quarter um, cup. And then I have, a, no, this is a third of a cup. I have a quarter cup of chicken broth that I'm gonna put mm -hmm. in here. Ooh, yeah. and then all that fresh ginger stuff? Well, the fresh ginger is it was in the, right. the, the marinade. And then I'm putting just the tiniest, tiniest bit of oil with the red pepper <laughs> flake. Just to, I love you. I mean, she won't even be able to taste it, but I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me get this stirred can up your, here. Can your husband eat real hot stuff? Uh, he doesn't like it, no. Oh, I love husband. it. I love it kicked up a notch. My husband could eat the hottest. Yeah, I like hot. Couldn't get it hot enough for So him. if you will, put some rice on the plate. Okay. After you clean up my mess. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Oh, I, I got to tell you something Stephanie told me this morning. I, I'm always afraid. I'm yeah. always afraid. Be very she afraid. Starts things okay. like this. Okay, she and her husband. We told you they're doing some remodeling, new floors, which they hired out. They've been painting together, and they put a door in. And so I asked the question since I'm an interviewer. Yes. And I said, "Do you ever correct or you know make an opinion on the other person's work?" And she said. Never, because they want to stay married. We encourage each other, and then when we're done, we high five each other, and whatever it even is, even if it's it falling is. down, even it, you know what? If it's falling down, we'll fix it later. I need to ask Karen about that. She wrote a book about marriage. We just want to encourage each other. We don't want to. There's enough <laughs> in the world that's bringing us down. We don't need to do it to each other. Well, I thought that was a pretty good answer. Thank you. Okay, so put a piece of chicken over your rice. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this I needs to cook a lot longer, so yeah. I'm speed cooking. Don't you think our, so beautiful. our viewers are um, used to, we don't cook things long enough. Yes. Okay, let me get a little spoon to, to uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to put a little, sure, there we All go. All right. I'm going to put a little bit of this over it, and you're going to taste it because I'm too afraid of chewing my cheek right now. Well. I, oh, I this smells really very good. Very tiny. Take just the tiniest bite. Very tiny there bite. There you go. Okay. We're a mess, folks, you know. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> My, I'm numb and she needs little itty bitty mm -hmm. bites. But she's getting ready to go talk to somebody. So. Yeah. Okay, you tell me how unbelievably delicious it is. It is. I mean, apricot preserves, you can't get any easier. And if that cooked as long as it should, that sauce could go on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. You want this one. Mm hmm. So, uh, information's coming up on your screen. They're free. Not much in this world is free, but our recipes are. So, um, take advantage of that. And again, it's called Szechuan Fried Chicken. And um, if you spell it wrong, we'll get it. I'm sure I would spell it wrong. <laughs> Stay with me, I want you to meet Karen. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, welcome back to Homekeepers, Karen. Thank we're so you. glad to have you from Michigan. 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 Beautiful state. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, Last time you were here, we talked about marriage, and uh, I hadn't remembered that you homeschooled five children. Did you, did they always, always go to homeschool, or did they ever have a, an experience in public school? No, I had them in private school for a few years, mm -hmm. the older few, and when my son was getting into third grade, I had one of his teachers encourage me to work with him a little bit more at home because um, he was not able to concentrate and be on task as much. And I wasn't, um, at that time, I really felt like if I worked with him, I could not have to give him 
the daily medication. So he wasn't really that severe that I would have to give him the medication. So I chose to bring him home and work with them, and that worked out great. Yeah, if you can avoid that medication, I think that is, is a good thing. It was worth a try. Um, I, was, uh, I was very impressed, you know, with your whole experience there. Uh, you emphasized them taking music, which is a good pathway to the brain, for math especially. I don't know about some of the other subjects. Oh, it was. It was, a, it was great for them to be in, in different music lessons. I had a piano player and a violinist, and I had someone that took the flute and the saxophone and the drums. We had them in all kinds of music lessons, and that really did work out well. And out of the group, we had several accountants. We had dentist. We have a hairdresser. So we have a, a, someone that runs their own mission, and it's really, it was very, a very profitable experience all the way around that homeschooling. I ended up um, at, in high school because I couldn't do justice to the chemistry at the same time as the geometry, and I felt like they were pursuing careers that needed So they went to depth. a public high school? or uh, They ended up going to a private school starting in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. So Well, you had given them a wonderful foundation, and that is the path that a lot of homeschoolers take. Now, I've got three nieces that their mother took them all the way through. They've all graduated from college, and I've lived long enough to see this homeschool movement really Oh wow! It's it's it has so much material. It is. Uh, help. There's everything you need, and of oh, course, yeah. I think with the internet now, it's even better. They do make it really easy, and there's a lot of help available to you. A lot of the companies will work directly with you. In fact, one of my grandchildren just finished kindergarten and with a home school program um, out of Florida, I believe, and she was able to have a teacher do part of it on the television and then my daughter would stop it and work with her independently. It was it was very successful. I think so much education is gonna come over the internet now. Yeah, I think there's some there's some good things to look at and for the, the to weigh it out, the advantages and the disadvantages and see what works best with your child. It's nice to know that we don't have to fit every child into one particular box for their education. Yes, and I think that um a mother, she doesn't know anything. She's got mother instincts. Right, that's right. <laughs> They're more powerful than knowledge. That's right. And uh, she knows her child. The books you have written, I don't know how you do it. Uh, these are not small books. And um, the way you've had to think through so many different topics here. Now, um, this is How to Build Children with integri Integrity and also a workbook. I've noticed more workbooks coming out uh, with some, depending on the subject matter of this book. Uh, what is the purpose in that? What's the goal? Well, you know, when you're reading through a book, it's very easy to acquire knowledge. And we can, uh, you know, accumulate all this knowledge, but if you mm -hmm. don't apply it, it never turns into wisdom. So knowledge applied becomes wisdom. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice with this kind of material to take the workbook and apply the information from the book to each child in particularly, because a lot of the book is meant to be a stepping stone for you to integrate your own strategies, your own purposes, your own plans, and intentionally and strategically address weaknesses in your children and equip them for their future battles. So it's nice to have a workbook to go through what you're going to do with each child and then to go back and maybe reassess and change things up a little bit. Once it's on paper, I think you can develop strategies better, you know, kind of like a boss would for their team. Let me remind you, the name of the book is How to Build Children with Integrity. Boy, is it needed right now. Uh, we'll put the website up. You can get it through her website or is it available... It's available Amazon. at Barnes and Noble, most everywhere where you can get books, mm -hmm. you can order this one or have it there. Who who is this book intended for? You know what? It is really intended for anyone that is parenting ch children, teaching children, has any children in their life, like for your grandchildren. It is taking the a avenues and encouraging you to pour into those children to equip them for the battles and the and the challenges that they're going to face mm -hmm. in their future and how you can take everyday 
and use it as a training ground to purposefully put things into your children. Yeah, it would be good for a public school teacher. Yes, have. a lot of it is could be very instrumental, it, even for a teacher. For example, say that you are getting your child to their sports. Um, every time that you go, you get there on time, and you're dropping them off. In the book, it talks about training them in the process so that not just getting in there, but explaining, no, we have to get there on time because we value other people's time more importantly than our own. It is respectful. It's considering someone else's time. So now you've just taken, taken an act that you're going to do anyways, mm -hmm. and you've integrated explaining the whys to them so that it can become part of their character as they go to their different meetings and events as they get older too. May your tribe increase. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think uh, if parents are slothful in that way, kids are gonna be, that's, that's their model. That's right. the only way they know. Um, I still marvel that you homeschooled five children. What were the divisions of the grades they were in? Well, my children were all five born within five and a half years. Oh my so Lord. I know. How many did you have in diapers at one time? Three in diapers at one time. That was something, but now I have 15 grandchildren and the oldest is seven years old. So it has quite multiplied, but it was, it was very strategic and intentional. I had to do, I did um, their schedules, each of their schedules mm -hmm. on Sundays at, at Sunday night. And then Monday, sometimes, um, you know, having the music, they were able to do some things independently. And then I was able to combine some of the grades and expect more from the older one and, you know, based it on their grade expectation and on their syllabuses. So then Karen, you, you prepare a schedule Sunday night for the whole week because everybody has little variances in there. Right, and that way when you put the schedule, there's some things that are stagnant, the, the subjects, and then you can tell them what pages um, we're gonna go through. So then at a glance, you can tell what they can do independently and then you can tell what needs you to teach them. So then you're able to have some of them set off on their own while you work tougher subjects through mm -hmm. with another group, so. I would think that uh, you could hold your own little conferences on homeschooling. <laughs> right, I do uh, have, actually, there's an appendix in the back of this uh -huh. book about some of the things mm -hmm. uh, to help homeschoolers. Th this is an amazing lady. I'm, I'm very intentional about preparation I know this sounds stupid, but uh, especially when I, I work, I kind of only come in here four days a week, but I put out ev every little thing, all the clothes, shoes, whatever, the night before, because sometimes you're kind of groggy in the morning. Preparation is the key to anything. You, mm -hmm. you never, you know, um, fail a test mm -hmm. or lose a battle. You never lose a race uh, or it's not ever done on that day. It's all done in preparing. Mm -hmm. And that's what this book is about. Mm -hmm. It's helping you realize mm -hmm. that those little toddlers, it's not, your job is not just to keep them busy. Mm -hmm. It's to prepare them for the battles that they're going to face mm -hmm. when they're teenagers and equip them. Mm -hmm. So when those battles come, because they will, that they are able to withstand and even be more than a conqueror mm -hmm. through them. Yes, and uh, if you just tuned in and you're wondering what is she talking about, it's all in this book, uh, How to Build Children with Integrity. integrity. Sorry. Um, now, I, w I was so very, very interested in the way you schedule homeschooling because we hear a lot today about millennials and their adult millennials in their parents' basement in their p pajamas <laughs> on the computer. <laughs> but you... You all dressed for school every day. Oh, absolutely. I think that if you you're- You didn't do it in your pajamas. No, uh -huh. that was, it was strict. We didn't even do sweat clothes uh -huh. because I wanted to raise good employees and conscientious workers. So I feel that you're not doing them a service if you don't teach them to dress with respect for the school day. I think that the way that you approach the school day is the way that they will respect it too. And I think mm -hmm. part of that is being dressed and ready to learn. And you dressed like a teacher. 
Yes, I did. Uh -huh. I did. I made sure that I was ready for the day. And that way, it was a very easy transition. They got jobs when they were young to start to earn money mm -hmm. towards their things. And it was a very easy transition for them to know that there was a certain time that they had to start. It wasn't flexible. Uh -huh. And they knew that when that you know time started, they had to be at their workstation. So I think that those are some of the things that I wanted to give my children and have them learn as a part of homeschooling. Some of the softer skills that kids are really not carrying they're not, forward they're now. They're not getting now. Right. Uh, no phones. No phones. Uh, because you're there to learn. Uh, you create an area, and we've already talked about the schedule. Um, as I mentioned, I have, well, I have uh, three, I have five great-grandchildren being homeschooled right now. And boy, are they smart. But um, also, uh, the three nieces I had that were homeschooled, I believe they had a room. I, ha I, th I think they were able to have a small room, and uh, they didn't go in there except to study. No, and that's good because you set it apart. Now, um, don't uh, be misled into thinking in this book, if you're not homeschooling, isn't for you because... These are just examples of principles that you bring into your daily routine, whether it's at school or homeschool or uh, private school or public school. But these can be brought in through in anything. So yes, uh, this would be a good book for anybody who works with children. It should be in the church library. Uh, there's just so many things in it that um, I don't know. When I was going through it, I uh, oh. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Thank you. Because the Lord had you do it. Uh, reasonable and realistic expectations. Do those have to vary from child to child? Well, I think that it's just to teach them generally to be reasonable and realistic. How many times does that help us mm -hmm. when we're going through something to say, you know what, that's not reasonable to expect my husband, who is a football aficionado, to mm -hmm. turn off the football to help me in the kitchen during uh, a Rose Bowl or some <laughs> big championship game. That's not reasonable and it's not realistic. So I think just taking those two words and just teaching your children, that's not reasonable, that's not realistic. It helps them to address the expectations in their lives with every situation. That's a good thing about this book. It'll give you chapter by chapter great ideas but it'll also help you to teach your children in areas that mm -hmm. you feel that you want to work with them in to strengthen where they're weak. Mm -hmm. So just to be reasonable, um, you know, we can't go to the park. It's raining. That's not reasonable, and it's not realistic. And it That's, helps them to learn for everything to apply that. Those two words, if they would learn that, it would be a great blessing right. for them in life. One more thing, uh, strict Internet rules. If I had young children today you might think I was abusing <laughs> because they they be have very little time on the internet and how they would use it and also the cell phones right studies are showing that just the internet time is is really doing bad things mm -hmm. for our children yeah. with their self-image, their expectations. They're not reasonable and realistic. It's mm -hmm. actually fighting mm -hmm. against so many things. And yes, you are a very wise parent if you take advantage of all the tools that are out there to limit that time. Even my some of my grown children have limits that they have um, set by themselves, on themselves to cut off time on um, mm -hmm. even Instagram and things. Mm -hmm. So I think that you're a very wise parent if you get your children mm -hmm. into creative things. Mm -hmm. The internet is going to kill creativity and kill so many things in your children. Yeah. It's sure a mixed blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to again remind you the name of the book, How to Build Children with Integrity. Uh, if you want a book that is very, very thoughtful, very detailed, and this um, uh, workbook to go with it and uh, what a great gift for a baby shower or something. Uh, you know, sometimes kids, they come from broken homes and broken situations. A uh, lot of abuse out there and all. And they don't even know. They don't even know the way. They don't understand realistic or reasonable or anything like that. Uh, but uh, God has really put it on her to chronicle it for you. Um, 
Okay, you got an empty nest, five children. They're all married? They're all married, and they have children, and it's beautiful to okay, see. Okay, uh, are, are they carrying into the sun in their own lives? Oh, yes, they definitely are. In fact, I, well, several of them are homeschooling. They're all um, going to put their kids, uh, they're looking to put a lot of their children into the same school, and some of them are actually utilizing a system that's half homeschooling mm -hmm. and half school. So they're all Good. doing different things, but it's beautiful to see that they all and are intentionally and strategically training their children. They're not just taking them to activities, but uh -huh. they're teaching them. I just talked to a daughter um, two days ago, and she was telling me how as part of their daily routine for the summer, she has her son doing things for other people. He's four years old. So just oh. integrating that into his life at an early age she and how that makes mama. him feel. <laughs> it's so beautiful because my children have asked me to put these I, ways that I train them into a book so that they could carry it with their children. I think this is so biblical. It is. The Bible it's, says, Deuteronomy, you shall teach these things to your children. We want to farm our kids out for other teachers, but you shall teach these things to your children. And that's the things of God. That's what uh, that's exactly what she did. This is a really stupid question. <laughs> Would you do it again? <laughs> oh, do the training of the children? Yes, or? all of oh, it. Oh, absolutely. And it was the biggest joy. I always tell the parents of the young uh -huh. children, I go around and speak to a lot of mothers of preschoolers groups uh -huh. and different women, and I always tell them, this is the time of your life. Soak it up to yes, be with children. Children right. are your legacy. They are your few. They are our future. Mm -hmm. So I will just. I want to pour as much as I can to help moms to be able to utilize tools to train this future generation as part of their legacy. And I, that was my favorite part of my life. I love doing that. I love equipping young moms. Well. Uh, what, a, what an inspiration you are, and we've never needed it more. We don't have time to go into it because we're almost out of time, but when we've got drag queens reading in libraries to toddlers and the whole homosexual operation, whatever they're trying to do, they're pushing their message on very, very young children, mothers better get very, very intentional. And one thing we know, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so when uh, parents take the time, like you did, and uh, we did have the website up for quite a while. I don't know how far she'll travel, but I think she would be a blessing to speak to any of your uh, leadership, uh, especially those who teach young children and the churches and so forth. Uh, I think God has really put a beautiful mantle on her for both the subject of marriage and raising children. And so um, please know you're always welcome here. Thank you. And you remember, okay? Join me next time, and you remember there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper, and she proved it. Thank you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.